my mouth and my soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear their rough and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. In the beginning was the world. Oh, the world was with God and the world was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. The life was the light of man. The light shining in darkness. And darkness comprehended in us. Worship him. Give him glory. Let him hear your voice. Appreciate him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Oh yes, from within. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give me praise. Give Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Father, we thank you for this power conference. Thank you for Thursday. Thank you for Friday. Thank you for yesterday. Thank you for the grand finale today. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, oh Lord. Thank you for our hands that can still clap. Some will have wanted to clap, but they have no hands to clap. Thank you for our mouth that can still shout hallelujah. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you all the adoration. Accept our worship in the name of Jesus. In this grand finale of this power conference, do great and mighty things, O Lord. Even as it is written, you send forth your word, your word heal them, deliver them from their destructions. Send forth your word this morning, let it come with power. Let your word bring healings, let your word bring deliverance. Set the captives free, save souls this morning, O Lord. We promise all the glory will be yours. Just release the blessing unto us. Thank you, Habba Father. Glory, honor, power, majesty be unto your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Now go ahead and give the Lord a really big, 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 big clap of praise. And then you may please be seated. Now the choir did extremely well this morning. And on their behalf, let's give Jesus Christ a big, big clap. That was wonderful. And I've always said that we must continue to appreciate the choir, the media. They are the first to come. They are the last to go. So please, let's appreciate, appreciate them. Appreciate the children's teachers, the youth teachers, the ushers, and then appreciate yourself too. Just give the Lord a big hand. Glory be to God. Well, before I go, go straight into the message, I want to bring to your attention. And I think the best way to start the introduction is to say that the husband of Pastor I.T. Inyang that you know very well is right here with us. Give the Lord a big hand. He's the apostolic leader and overseer of Sure World Assembly, Lagos, Nigeria. Come on, celebrate Pastor Dennis Inyang, Pastor Dr. Dennis Inyang. Give the Lord a big hand. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You're welcome, sir. Thank you so, so very much for being here and for always releasing her at those crucial moments. Huh? Thank you so, so very much. We love you. We love your family. We thank God for your testimony and it will be permanent in Jesus' name. Church, one more time. Come on, celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. It's a very important Sunday morning because we are rounding up the power conference. This is perhaps the only power conference in the year that is right in the middle of the month. It's usually at the end of the month. And that's because something big is going to be happening at the end of the month into the beginning uh, of the month of March. Our esteemed, dearly beloved Father and the Lord, Pastor Enoch Adejare Adebo will be turning 80 on the 2nd of March. So there will be a lot of celebration at that time. Um, beginning with the solemn assembly into the special legal service. So I wanted to make sure we tidy up the power conference at the middle of the month so that we all just 
fully participate in the special Holy Ghost service. But well, it's been wonderful since Thursday. I mean, it's been wonderful. I mean, if you agree with me, you will have given the Lord another round of applause. It's been really, really wonderful. So we go straight away into the Word of God because we have a lot of ground to cover this morning. Our brother, Brother Akosile, turned 50. And we've been giving his thanksgiving. The Orlani is, I mean, I found, you know, a family that share wedding anniversary with my wife and I. We are February 17th. They are February 18th. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. So the celebration began uh, Thursday, Friday, and the grand finale of the celebration is, is this morning. The Orlani is 21 wedding anniversary. Let's, let's appreciate the Lord for them. But can you believe if anybody had told you that this beautiful lady is still there right in the front? He's been married to me for 26 years. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. Give the Lord a really, really big hand. I met her when she was only 19. <laughs> December 26, 1989. About 8 p.m. Glory be to God. Well, they want to hear more. Come on, let's hear the message. Give the Lord another round of applause. <laughs> well, you will, you will hear a little bit more. Now I see. Once I was blind, but now I see. That's our theme. And we'll be taking the message, Supernatural Turnaround Part 2. We took Part 1 last Sunday. We're taking the concluding part this morning. John chapter 9. 22 to 25. We've been studying this man born blind since the beginning of February. John 9, 22 to 25. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he's of age, ask him. So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. And he answered and said, whether he's a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. A supernatural turnaround is a divine encounter where God reverses negative situation and turns adverse situation around for good. That's what he's about to do here this morning. I had only amen from this side. I can hear only one person saying amen from here. Yeah. Now the amen here is still louder than the amen here. Yeah. The supernatural dismisses the natural. The supernatural set aside all the natural laws. Sarah had gone into menopause. Naturally speaking, case closed. But you see, when God has not closed a case, the case cannot be closed. God, Lord, open up the case of Sarah. And that same womb brought forth Isaac. That God is alive. That God is here. Whatever you are waiting for will be delivered unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. God is not partial. What is done for one, he can do for another. Oh, some years ago, I believe, I believe it must have been 2018 or 2017. It was first time Pastor IT stepped into this church. I never met her before. Pastor Ronke had informed me that a woman is going to be coming here. She waited for 25 years to have her first child. Now she's up three. Say, wow, I, I need to see that fellow. By that time, I think we have done like 22 years waiting. And then she came here. She began to sing. And I began to say, mm, this woman is not normal. <laughs> you know, because when God visits you, you can't be normal. Oh, you cannot be normal. It's impossible to be normal. You cannot be normal. You can't be normal. You cannot be normal. It's impossible to be normal. Because that weekend, I think my wife would have just done most likely the seventh IVF that failed. And she was narrating her story. And in her own story, apart from waiting for that long period, she, she was crippled for one year on wheelchair. Imagine somebody who could dance like that. Now couldn't stand up to dance. And God showed up, got her off the wheelchair. Why would she be normal? Why would she be normal? Why would she be normal? 
She said, once I was barren, now I have three. I said, God, you are not a partial God. You are not a partial God. You must visit my family. Not long after that, we have a testimony. And you can see Isaac is in the house. He's eating biscuit now. Come on, give the Lord a really big clap of praise. The Almighty God, you just may not be looking for a child, but whatever you are looking for, the Almighty God who answered Pastor Dennis and Pastor I.T. after 25 years, the one who answered us after 23 years, will answer you regardless of what the need may be in the name of Jesus. Oh, see, right from the hospital, when I, we took the picture, she was one of the few people I forwarded to. Pastor I.T., it has happened. It has happened. And she was at the airport coming from a trip. And she told me that she just knelt down right there at the airport. They said, Madam, what's, what's going on? She said, No, leave me, leave me, leave me, leave me, leave me. You can't understand. Leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. Look, when you hear the testimony of your brother waiting for a long time, you will not, you can't be normal. You cannot be normal. Look, you are too normal this morning. Come on, you are too normal. Come on, you are too normal. You can't be normal when you hear a testimony. You cannot be normal. shake it, Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The Lord will visit you this season in the name of Jesus. The supernatural can make a poison become a delicacy. A man that they have ganged up against, they poison the food. And so one of the people that poisoned was sent to go and look at him, but now he should be dead. So when he showed up, ah, the man saw, I said, ah, did you, have you eaten? He said, I ate. Ah, which food? I said, can't you see the plate? I, I dealt with the thing. He said, you hurt it? I said, yes. You, this food, you hurt it? Ah. The man said, what's the problem? Said, you hurt it? I said, yeah, I hurt it. I finished it. In fact, I enjoyed it. Very nice. Thank you very much. Do you have some more? That man broke down. said, ah, ah, ah. You had poison and you are still here. Ah, ah. That man gave his life to Christ. Right there. Said, we poison you. You are here. Lead me to this Jesus. When poison becomes delicacy, you know God is at work. Oh, I'm believing God with you that God will show up. If you are the next to testify, the enemy will be surprised concerning you in the name of Jesus. The supernatural confuses the scientists and makes doctors dumbfounded. A doctor gave his life to Christ and was hearing the testimony. That she removed the womb of a woman because of complication at birth. Few years after, he was the same doctor who now delivered this same woman of a set of twins. So, woman, what happened? As after you removed my womb, I met Jesus. And then since that moment, I began to trust him. And now I'm pregnant. I said, but you don't have a womb. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, because the supernatural will nullify the supernatural. The, the natural. You saw the woman that sang here during one still house of praise. If you don't believe the one I share. I mean, she had one, two, three, four, five children after she had been, she had not had for five years. And then she said, Now five is enough. Doctors, can you tie my womb? And then they went there, they found out that she had no tubes. How can you are too normal for me this morning? She was here. She was here. She shared the testimony right here. The supernatural makes natural of no effect. I have witnesses to this one. A man in Nigeria, God bless Nigeria, Africa, was the, the arm robbers came against him and they put up gun and they began to, they shot him severally. The bullet went through the shirt, the inner one came out from the back. He showed us the shirt. How many of you know what I'm saying? I mean, let people know. Sometimes they think, Pastor, where are they getting this story? I mean, I saw it. It was on the television. The man, we saw the shirt. We saw how the bullet entered. The inner wear entered. Passed through the body. But by the time everything went past, the man was standing. By the time the enemy is, is, is finished, you will be the one standing. The enemy will be the one falling down. Let me hear your loud Amen. I 
can't preach my message anymore. <laughs> but it's not important. It has to be what God needs us to hear. Because now I'm almost done. Supernatural turnaround brings into existence the non-existent. Something that is not exist, existing at all. When supernatural is at work, it can come into existence. I was a very young graduate and was doing what you can, you can know as military service, but in Nigeria it's called NYSC, National Youth Service. And so I was there and they told us that there's embargo on employment. No employment. Once you are done, you guys will go. But one week before we are done, they went, the MD, a white guy, went to the HR. He said, I just, I just love this, this young man. Can you please lift the embargo? Process his employment within one week. And they put the embargo back. <laughs> see, see, normal people. <laughs> you know, come on. Let me hear some screaming. Let, this, this happened to me. Glory be to God. <laughs> I was to give you seven points. But I'm almost done. And I know when, when God <laughs> needs me to stop. This man born blind had something very unique that I want to share with you briefly, be the only point of the seven points. And the parents have one thing unique to this miracle. This man was blind, born blind. And Jesus came, put clay, spat on it, hygienically terrible, by all standards anointed, put that same clay in his eyes and told him, go and wash in Siloam. How does a blind man walk from here to that place? He could have said, sir, um, I may be blind, but I still have some, some common sense. Go and wash in Siloam. I'm blind. That's the problem. Can't you get it? He didn't complain about the clay in his eyes. If you want to blind somebody, you put clay in the eyes of the person. But when God is at work, he's waiting for simple faith <laughs> and simple obedience. The man never argued. He took the first step. Ah, he found out that, all right, it looks like I can <laughs> move it. He moved the second one. Because see, when Jesus is the one sending you, he's backing you. So when you're taking the steps, say, I'm the one sending you, I'm behind you. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. He didn't get to the Siloam by himself alone. Jesus was behind him. He washed and he came back saying, simple faith, simple obedience. This morning, I'm hoping that somebody, we have simple hope, simple faith, Simple obedience. Almost everyone that Jesus healed, he will ask them, do you believe that I can do this? They say, yes, all right. And then when the miracle is done, say, your faith has made me whole. Or in my summary, I say, great is your faith. When he got to a subdivision in Mark chapter 6, if you read from verses 5, 6, 7 there, the Bible says he could not do much miracle there because they despised him. They despised him and said, oh, is he not the son of the carpenter? We know him. We know the sisters. Don't do that. Normal people sometimes it takes, that it's hard for them to get miracle. Because they reason everything out. Say, anointing oil. Right? So what then happens? How does that translate to a miracle? Where does it flow to? Where are the illiterates? Those who are very abnormal, who just are radical for Jesus. When Jesus gives an instruction, they just go for it. 
The final thing, and I will be done. The parents. The neighbors came. Said, this boy is not saying the truth. He said, Won't Jesus open his eyes? Is he your son? <laughs> the two of them, no argument. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> He's our son. Was he born blind? Of course. He was born blind. So how did he get his sight? <laughs> this boy, we train him well. He's of age. He doesn't lie. You ask him. He will tell you. I see here a united family. As against a family. I say, hey, keep quiet. The wife was <laughs> about to answer. I said, no, no. I'm, I'm, the man is the head of the house. I talk first. Keep quiet. Or who calls into this matter? I will answer them. It is difficult for families not united to receive miracles. It is very difficult. I've counseled many people, usually close to their miracle. Something will happen. A disagreement will break forth. And then this, the enemy will steal the miracle. Or if they get the miracle, the enemy will be waiting to steal it. I told you this story sometimes ago. Please, those have been here longer. This family waited for their only child for six, six years. The child came. And then the woman is always a very jovial woman, but sometimes could take her joke far. And the husband, I don't know what part of Nigeria he's from, but man, he's always, you know, he's just, his eyes is. So it came one of the days, went to the kitchen, picked two pieces of beef, and was eating. The wife said, you have taken your portion of meat tonight. So, ah. But the wife took the joke further and dished the food without meat. Look at how simple that was. She splashed the food on her. What are you doing? And there was a fight because of two pieces of meat. That night they didn't pray together. The man ended up in the study, the woman and the, and the master. Their only child began to convulse. And she said, well, I can handle it. Long story short, the convulsion became bad and worse. And then quickly knocked the door to the husband. They said, come, come out here. She said, don't you have bed in your room? Why are you disturbing me? Wasted some more time. By the time finally she, he came out, their only child had died. Now, how do you explain that you, a Christian, because of two pieces of meat, you created a fight in your house that could not be resolved immediately, and you opened the door for the enemy to steal your only blessing? I witnesses here. Whenever you see any group divided, whether it's a church or a nation, or a family, the enemy is licensed to destroy them. A church in Puerto Rico had a big feud among the pastors. It was so bad that, actually I should say between the pastor and the assistant pastor, it was so bad that they will, you know, one faction will write, will abuse the other faction, they put it in the offering bag, it was very bad. And then one after the other, people began, the first person died, second person died, third person died. The fourth person that died, died in front of the church. It was in the evening. She was making a phone call. Pastor Wana, you know the story. You know, I don't know where she went for children's rehearsal or Sunday school rehearsal. One of those rehearsals in the evening. It was raining. Thunder struck her in front of the church. It was at that point. The Awanas know this story. My wife knows this story. Because there was division. That's why I told the people in the first service. Anywhere there's acrimony and fight, don't be careful and don't be the reason for it. I was asked to pray for a lady who had, I think, say three cancer, an African American. I picked up the phone. As I was about to pray for her on the phone, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Tell her to go and reconcile with the siblings and the mom. So I told her, 
say, oh, that is true. We've had big problem for a long time. I said, well, I didn't know that. The Holy Spirit knows. Can you go and reconcile? And then she went. It was a Tuesday. They did family reunion on Wednesday. On Thursday, she went. And cancer had dried up completely. I can go on and on. As a pastor, I think not less than 70%, and not just only me, I think most pastors, but 70% of your counseling time is man and woman who can see eyeball to eyeball. These days, they've even taken it higher. They now include, you know, threats. If you get back to this house, I will kill you. The woman you walk the eye with. I was on the plane one day, and the lady sent me, you know, a text message that my husband said my life is not safe in the house. I said, what are you still waiting for? Are you telling me that? <laughs> because if, if he kills her and police check her phone, say, who was the last person she texted? <laughs> and if you said, wait for me, I'm coming back this evening. And the fellow died. They are police. This is not Nigeria. The police will come. Say, hey, you are you you join with the husband to kill a woman. I say, go to safety. Use every force of law you need to protect yourself. And then when I come, we can talk. But why will you get to that point? Do you know how many husbands have killed the wives and vice versa? How did we get here? I'm not talking about unbelievers talking about Christians in the church. The parent of this boy was united. I thank God for my wife. This 26 years, I give God all the glory. I mean, you know the, the two of us are very different personalities. But you know, when you are different, it's a blessing. The way I'm looking at uh, Pastor Dennis and Pastor IT, oh my God. <laughs> you know, you can see when Pastor Dennis was dancing, he, was, he, was around, he danced well, but around the square. When, when Pastor IT started to dance, you start from here, we go there, we go to that side. You know, we may be different. My wife is a very good dancer, but she goes like that, you know, play, but you know, I have, to, I have to roll this way, I roll that way, but it's okay. Most of the biggest things that happened in my life, God used my wife. When we won the green card, I didn't win. She won. This property, she was the first person to step here. Because she was coming from work and God showed her this place. He came home. Many of us, we have turned our back on the person that God has given to you to be your destiny helper. There is no man who will experience fullness of joy except you are united with the wife of your youth. I can tell you a lot of things that had happened to me. I was struggling when we got married. Yes, I was working in the bank, but I was struggling. In my group, corporate banking group, I was only one that without a car. One of my mates, no, rather, that we trained together, as an accountant, the next time young must be in church, um, you know, I, I will find him after the message. He can tell you we were struggling. His own parents were well to do. So when we got married, it was the father's car. My father didn't have a car, I have not bought a car. But we got married February 17, 1996. By September 16, 1996. I'd become a millionaire in Naira. Only in seven, only in seven months. Three years after we've built our first, first house. Cash, no mortgage. Because he that founded a wife. 
find it a good thing and obtain it favor from the Lord. You may appear to be doing well, but your joy is not full yet until you make up with the wife of your youth. I would travel with her everywhere. They knew us on the airline. Aero contrast was in particular. I mean, no child had come. Every trading, every, most of them, most of them. In fact, it was so bad one time. She didn't travel with me. The air hostess said, oh, where's your PA? <laughs> so I said, I said, who? Oh, I said, the, the lady that, that travels with you all the time. I said, oh, that must have been a dangerous PA. <laughs> I said, that's my wife. I said, oh, really? That's nice. That's nice. We went everywhere. We still do. I love her with everything. Nah. Because I know that there's no way I can be here except that I married her. I want to encourage you. Because this is also the grand finale of our family week. Leave church today and go celebrate your wife. The February edition of Family Week is men's assignment. October is the whole month of family. It will be assignment for women. So women enjoy it. Um, because today, um, we have an assignment rather, we have an assignment for this 21st anniversary celebration. And then my wife demanded of me something yesterday in the marriage class and I said give me tea tomorrow I will deliver <laughs> for all the men in the house I'm giving your wife permission to make a request of you And I give them permission to report to me whether or not you did what they have asked of you. Now rise up now. Rise up. Rise up. Lift your hands to heaven. The name, the name of Jesus is greater and higher than all names. He is Lord. beg you in the name of the Lord, surrender to Jesus. A life without Christ is full of crisis. That's why I welcome those who are not saved to please come. Surrender your life to him. I know we are up there. I wouldn't want you to come out because of the social distancing and all that. But where you are and those in the virtual church, just raise your hand to him. Say, I surrender to you. Or you want him to touch your marriage because you need the touch. Raise your hand. I just want to pray for you. If you're in the virtual church, just pray and say, Lord, save my soul. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that you are the savior of my soul. I confess my sins. I repent of them. Save my soul. If you pray that prayer, I can assure you that Jesus show mercy on you. Now the ushers will move around. There must be an usher around you. If you keep your hand up, they will put paper in your hand. They will take your name and your number and then they will give it to me and I can then continue to pray for you. So make sure your hand is still up where you are. If you're in the virtual church, a number will be on the screen. Make sure you write to us and then again, we'll continue to pray. The rest of us is an anointing service this morning and we are going to do it very quickly. I had planned to have an anointing service as led by the Spirit. But then we got an email from the headquarters in Dallas, our, our, our continental overseer, and instructed all our pastors, all the churches, to anoint every member of the congregation, including the children. So, we are going to be having an anointing service this morning. Very soon I'll be calling you to, you know, take your own oil, you know, and then you anoint, the head of the family will come out, you take the oil, 
you anoint yourself, anoint members of your family. The children's church, we please go to the children's church with my wife, with a few other teachers, anoint the children there. Um, you know, then for Pastor Ebuna, maybe Pastor um, Age can anoint the youth so that we can do it very, very quickly. But before we go into that, raise your right hand and say, Father. Say loud and clear. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me experience supernatural turnaround. By the reason of this morning anointing service, turn my situation around. Go ahead, I pray. 